So I know there's a million reviews on YouTube of the Glock 19, but I did want to go over just a few things uh, that make mine maybe a little bit different from other people's. Um, and I kind of wanted to go over what you see on the front here uh, and how it kind of, it, it is a big deal for, for people that do live uh, within restrictive states such as California and New York uh, and a few of the other ones. I forgot what they are. Massachusetts is another one. Uh, but I did, I did want to, I did want to go over this real quick and what I have at least, um, set up on this gun. So we'll kind of start from the front as we usually do, and then work our way back. So I guess I'll start with what, what sticks out the most. Oh, didn't mean to touch that. Whatever. Uh, I got some, some oil on the front there, uh, cause I'm starting to get a lot of wear on the front of the gun. But, uh, so I am running a X300 turbo. So this is their newest uh, line of X300 series. So there's the X300 Ultra, the X300 Vampire, which is the IR Illuminator. And then this is their X300 Turbo. The X300 Ultra is a more of a, uh, a floodlight more than anything. This is more of one of those, uh, those beam lights. So you can kind of see it's a pretty tight beam. Uh, I do like this. I do prefer this over... The X300 Ultra, I do have the older X300 Ultra right here with a emissary development uh, switch on here. But as you can see, this one's a lot, uh, if I can get this thing to turn on, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's a lot more wide and it's a lot more floody um, than the X300 Turbo. So where this one kind of struggles is getting through uh, something called photonic barriers. So photonic barriers are anything that restricts the light from going through it. So this would be stuff like, uh, for example, it, I'm in upstate New York, so it snows a lot here. Uh, having having something like the X300 Turbo to actually punch through that snow, because a lot because snow, uh, I don't for a lot of people um, that may not know, snow does actually reflect quite a bit of light. So something like this, that's a floodlight, uh, would actually struggle to get through that snow. And then, you know, let's say you're pointing it at a certain target that, you know, your light at a certain target. Um, this light is going to have a lot of trouble getting through that. And there's not going to be a lot of light on your target by the time it actually gets there. So that's where this thing really comes in handy is, uh, weather conditions. And also this can punch through glass or a windshield or something like that a lot better than something like the X300 Ultra. So that's kind of why I decided to upgrade to the X300 Turbo. Um, and then, uh, so that's the light at least. So I will go on to the, the main topic at least that I wanted to get to um, on this particular gun. And that's the, the Radiant Afterburner and Ramjet combo that you see here. So it comes with the barrel and then it also comes with the compensator. So this has been like all the rage lately. Um, it's a very reliable compensator. You don't have to get their guide rod and their spring. I do have that in here, their uh, compressor guide rod. But the main reason that I wanted to go, or actually this is basically the only compensator that you can get with a New York State um, that isn't like barrel porting. I don't have any ported guns. No, I don't have any ported guns. Um, but this, this is basically the only compensator that you can get within New York state that actually attaches onto the end of your barrel. And that's because this compensator locks onto the end of the barrel via a, um, basically the barrel is the shape of a triangle. And then, um, you basically put the compensator on and then you can see that set screw on the side there, this, this set screw here. Um, and you basically tighten that down. You don't need, uh, any Loctite because it is a taper screw. So, um, it is really secure. I don't know if I put Loctite on it. I might've put Loctite on it just for, um, for shits and giggles kind of thing. Uh, so that's what I have on there for that. Um, and I, I do think it is a big deal that, that Radian came out with this. They basically own the market at this point for non-threaded compensators. Uh, 
And it is, it is really exciting for someone like me who does live within New York State and can't own a threaded barrel uh, where you could put basically any compensator you want on a threaded barrel. Um, because I live in a restrictive state where you can't have a threaded barrel, um, this is a pretty big deal and it does reduce recoil. I think they claim by, uh, it was either 34 or 44%. I can't, I can't really remember, um, exactly what, exactly what they said, uh, how much it reduces the recoil by, uh, but it is quite a bit and it does make actually a pretty big difference. Um, and it is probably the most reliable compensator on the market at the moment. Um, I am running all stock internals in this gun. Um, I don't mess with triggers. Uh, this is one of my primary carry guns. And uh, as I've said before in my in my other reviews, you shouldn't really be messing with trigger weights and stuff like that. Um, I have put quite a few quite a few thousand rounds through this gun, so the trigger on it's actually not too bad. At this point, you come to the wall, and then there's a little bit of take up, and then it's a pull right there. And I know exactly when this trigger is going to go off um, every time, which is a big reason why I shoot this gun so well is because I know exactly where the trigger is going to go off every time. Um, a couple of my other guns, I, I do struggle to shoot them a little bit because I don't know where the trigger is going to break. But this is all stock internals. Um, normally, I would run the Cogworks extended slide release, but I am currently spray painting that and it's drying right now. Um, it's like, it's a shiny kind of color like this. It's actually more shiny. It's like a chrome and I wasn't a huge fan of it because it didn't match the rest of my gun. Uh, so I am spray painting that black and it is drying at the moment. So that's why I don't have that installed right now. I generally do, uh, override my slide catch on this side and it does, uh, slow down my reloads a little bit. Move this over a little bit just so it's easier to prop it up against. There we go. Uh, it does slow down my reloads just a tad. Um, so that's why I do choose to run the uh, the extended slide release from Cogworks. And I know everyone's gonna I, everyone's gonna freak out. Oh, you know what? I didn't go over my iron sights. Uh, these are. They're not, they might be Trigicon. I can't quite remember. These, nope, these are Ameriglow. I don't know if you can see that or not. Ameriglow H3LRs, whatever that means. Uh, so they are night sights and then they have a pretty bright orange, uh, would you call that fiber optic? I don't know what's in that. I think it is fiber optic. It's a fiber optic ring with a with a tritium ampule in the center, and then the the rear's got uh, two tritium ampules as well. Um, and then as I was getting to prior to saying that, uh, I am running a Holosun EPS. Everyone's probably going to freak out that I'm not running an American made optic, but honestly, Holosun owns the uh, enclosed emitter market right now. Um, just because they fit on an RMR footprint. And um, Trigicon did just recently come out with their, is it the RCR, I think? Uh, they do have their own enclosed emitter that is on an RMR footprint, um, but that's like $800 or something like that. And this is like 300, so I'd rather pay for this. Um, and there's been a lot of reviews on it that have said that it's pretty good. So I'm gonna take their word for it and it's given me no issues so far. Uh, that's what the dot looks like in there. It's just a standard red dot. They do make the ones with the solar on the top, the solar panel on the top, just to give you a little bit more extra battery life. Um, it increased in the, it, it made the price a little bit more expensive. So I wound up not getting it um, just cause I didn't really think I needed it anyway. And I think it looks kind of cheap to me uh, so I kind of went with just their standard model and then I did witness mark everything. So I have my windage and elevation all witness marked. And then I do have the screws, uh, witness marked as well. Just so if they do happen to walk out or something, you know, something comes loose, I can see that it came loose. Um, I'm not running that on my battery tray screw here. Um, just cause I am going to be taking this out and putting it back in quite a bit, uh, 
you don't have to take this optic off to replace the battery, which is the main reason why I started going with optics like this, that you don't have to remove the battery because uh, something like the RMR, you have to remove the the whole optic in order to get to the battery, and then you have to re-zero the optic. So um, I prefer something like this. And I did have this slide sent off to Jaegerworks to have it cut for the EPS. So there's no plates or anything underneath this that it attaches to. It attaches right to the slide. And when uh, Jaegerworks cuts a slide, they will also include their own proprietary screws that come with it. And these are some pretty stout screws, so I highly doubt that I'm going to have any issues with them. Um, but they do come with the slide, and then any parts that you send them, they'll also put on for you. So I sent my slide along with, or I set my iron sights along with my slide and they put them on for me, which was pretty cool. And then I did have this uh, Cerakoted gray, um, just cause I think it looks good. And uh, I didn't want a stupid color that makes it look unprofessional cause in my opinion, uh, for defensive firearms at least, you should really have something that looks professional, something that looks, doesn't look janky. Uh, I, I know you'll probably say, well, you know, the tape makes it look janky, kind of somewhat, but I, I do prefer, um, I, I just prefer having something that looks professional, uh, black, gray, um, tan, maybe OD green, like something like that. Um, so that's why I chose this color. Um, it wasn't that much extra. I think it was like 50 bucks for the, the Cerakote, so it's not too bad. Um, and then the tape, the janky tape, the janky tape job <laughs> that I put on here, this is goon tape. Um, you could really use any standard hockey tape. You don't have to use this by any means, but this is specifically meant for firearms, which is why I chose to use it. It hasn't come off at all yet. Um, and it does give me a little tiny bit more traction than what the standard grip gave me. I personally think that, I don't know why I said it like that. I don't know why but i personally think that um gen 5 glocks are slippery uh, i've never shot a gen 4 glock i kind of want to get one just to see if it's a little better but i wish it had finger grooves uh now that i've been shooting this quite a bit i wish it did have the finger grooves um yeah i wish it had the finger grooves on it because it, it it really does improve the traction and it does help improve uh recoil control a little bit um, I was running an SLR Rifleworks magwell on this, but I decided to take it off only because it, it had like a little gap that would happen in between um, the magwell and the grip, and I really didn't like it, and it gave me a really nasty um, like callus kind of thing on my, my pinky. I mean, I already get calluses from shooting because I'm gripping the gun really tight, uh, but I really didn't like the way it sat on here, so I did take it off. And for a while, I don't, I can't entirely remember where I got it from, but I am running a grip plug in here. It kind of does act like a magwell, because um, if you take this out, there's quite a bit, there's like a big ledge in here, uh, so that you can attach a lanyard there. Uh, there's, there is a lanyard hole on here, so. Um, but I don't use a lanyard. I don't think I. I don't think anyone uses lanyards other than like maybe special forces dudes because special forces uh, does use the Glock 19 as their stand. Well, at least Army Special Forces does. They use the Glock 19 as their um, standard issue sidearm. I don't know why they don't use a Glock 17, but uh, whatever they want to do, their special forces they know more than I do, I guess. Um, so they they probably run lanyards on their guns, but I don't. So I put a grip plug in here. Um, and then I think that's about it. Um, nothing else really too special about this. I don't have any special, um, you know, back plate or anything like that that says anything super crazy. Uh, cause it is, again, it's a carry gun. So I don't want to make a fool out of myself basically. Um, but yeah, so that is my Glock 19. I have... One other gun I'd like to do a review on here in the near future. And so you guys can look forward to that.
but this is my Glock 19 and have a nice day.